So if you've created a custom knob with custom graphics inside contact, how do you then see the value of what it is you're changing? That was a question asked by Sarah recently on this channel, and I thought now's about time that I actually answer that question. So today, let's dive back into contact scripting and take a look at how to do this. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. Now we're gonna dive straight into it today because what we're looking at trying to do is take our nice custom graphic that we've created for a knob and actually attach some kind of label so we can have a readout of exactly what it's changing. This assumes a few things first. The most basic of these, of course, is that you are a little bit familiar with contact scripting or the KSP language. And if you're not, there's actually a great full tutorial series on my page where you can start and, and launch into that. As well as, of course, covering off the basics of how to sample things and also how to build your sample library inside contact. If you haven't looked at custom graphics before and how to add those into contact, how to design them in sort of like illustrator programs, then I have a course on that too. Just three videos to check out how to create and add them into contact and then script them in as well. And finally, I'm gonna be using Sublime Text Editor for this so that I can seamlessly save my text in an external editor, which syncs through to contact. If you wanna know how to create that one, I've also got a video for that too. Now let's dive in and check this out. Just for a little bit of a visual guide of what it is that we're actually trying to achieve, I've opened up my old Snowfall library, which you can actually download for free on Pianobook if you want. This library has some cool little things like animation and that sort of stuff. But one thing here is that I have got a series of custom knobs. Obviously this is all a custom designed UI and there are labels underneath. So if I change something, it'll actually update the value. And that's essentially what Sarah would like to know. So I've created our own simple script to begin with. If I close that library, it's just this script that's running here. It has a custom knob and a blank field or a, basically a, a blank label. And we're going to try and use and these two items to create what we just saw in Snowfall. To begin with, the basic script is very simple. We've got some performance view stuff. So we're making the performance view, setting the height and width, clearing out messages, that sort of thing. All the basic stuff that we usually start with. And then I've declared the knob and the label beneath it. Just to remind ourselves what that is, that's the knob there and then the label underneath. The interesting thing is though, that this is, even though it's a knob, is actually not what I've declared. I haven't declared a knob, I've actually declared a UI slider. And that's essentially because the UI slider is the only thing that we can attach a custom image to. If you try to declare a standard UI knob, you're not actually going to be able to attach your own element to that. So instead, we create a UI slider and then we can attach whatever we want to animate, which includes a knob instead of a slider. Interestingly, there's actually a lot of things that you can do with uh, just the UI slider that has nothing to do with sliders at all, but that's probably for more videos and more courses down the track. For now, that means that essentially I've declared the slider and I've declared my volume ID, which is just a nice quick container to uh, contain this information here which is relevant for some of the other variables. I've done videos on that in the past. Then I've actually moved the control into place and then I've set the image, so the knob value, and I've also set the mouse behavior so as I drag up and down, the knob changes rather than left and right like the slider default is. If any of this is new to you or confusing, check back over my first steps contact course, as well as also the custom graphics course as well. Then I've declared a label. I've declared the label here, done the same declaring of an ID sort of variable to help me out with this uh, ID value. And then I've moved it into place. I've set the width. So the width of it is 60 pixels. And I've done that to actually match the size of my knob. And that's important for later. And I'll, I'll touch more on that in a, in a little bit. But then the set text, I've just blank, you know, added, added in there blank just to kind of give us something to start with. And that all together has created this very basic script here. The script is just there in the script editor and it's just created those two simple elements. Now let's tie in the functionality of how this actually works. There's actually two things that we wanna do here. We don't just want it to be able to control the cutoff filter and spit out the value, but ideally, when we load the instrument up, it would be nice if it could read it straight away. So we're gonna work on that problem first. What I mean by this is if I want this knob to actually attach to something and read out the value of whatever it's attached to, I need to set it up from the word go so it actually shows that. Otherwise, by default, it's just zero. And obviously I've just got blank in there at the moment. What I've done is just added a simple low pass filter down here and I'm gonna tie it to the cutoff knob in this section. So here's where it gets interesting. To begin with, I'm actually going to do some stuff in the on init block so that when this instrument loads for the first time, then it will read that cutoff knob on my filter and update both the knob and the label for it. First thing I wanna do is I want to attach 
a value to the knob. So the easiest thing to do here is that we can actually attach a value based on reading whatever the knob value is for the cutoff knob on the filter. So I'm going to be using the volume uh, variable that I've created, my, my knob, and then I'm going to assign it a value and I want it to go look for the value that whatever the cutoff knob is at, I want it to set that to. In order to do that, we use this function here. It's basically get engine par or get engine parameter. And I'm looking for the engine par cutoff parameter. That's the knob on the filter that I'm wanting to get. Uh, it's not in a group. I set it at the instrument level. So I've just got negative one for that parameter that would normally be there. And it's the first slot. Now, because it's zero base counting, that means it's zero slot. And it's on the instrument section, not the send or the bus section. What that looks like inside contact is that I'm in the insert effects, I'm in the first slot, and it's not inside a group, it's not on the send effects or even indeed the main effects or the bus effects, it's there on the insert. So essentially everything inside here is just telling contact where to look for the information. So what the knob is and where the knob is. If I save that and we'll go over to contact now and we will apply that, we can see the value of the knob has changed to reflect it. Now we want to do the same thing with this label and here's where the heart of the question is. We could do the same thing. This set underscore text function here is just assigning what we call like a string or text to the label. It's a predetermined text that won't ever change. But we could actually replace this with a function. For example, if I copy this section here and pop it over here, no need for quotations around it because this is going to be a variable that updates continuously. We only put the quotations around it if it's a string. So that isn't necessary. I've just popped the function straight in there. And if I hit save and I go back to contact and apply, we will see a number show up there. Now, of course, this number of like 400,000 is it's meaningless for a cutoff filter. The cutoff, of course, only goes from like, you know, zero to 20,000 hertz usually. So that number is odd. But the reason for that is because contacts knobs, all of the knobs that are inside any of the controls or effects or whatever, they all have a potential for values that are between zero and one million. That's the default. And you would find that out in my contact course if you went through that as well. So when I say get engine parameter, it's just returning whatever the value of that knob is, which is some number between zero and one million. We actually want the engine parameters display value. So we need a slightly different command. It's really easy to do. Instead of it being a get engine par, it's actually a get engine par underscore display or disp. When I save that and we go back over to contact and apply it, now it's coming up with 370 which is 370 hertz. And if I scroll down to the filter down here, we can see that the cutoff is at 370 hertz. So that's perfect. What if we want the hertz after it as well? I find that it's a really simple solution here because we can mix the function that we've added and a string. If I go into here and I add an ampersand to say and, so as in I want this function to be shown up in the label and I want something else. I'm then gonna use my quotations. I'll leave a little space there just for, you know, making it look pretty. And then I'm gonna add Hertz in there like that. What happens when I save and apply that? Well, it's going to add Hertz to the end of the label, which is really nice. Now, of course, we want it to do something when we actually move it because none of that's actually doing it at the moment. It's just reading whatever the state is currently and applying it. But let's add that functionality now. We do this, of course, with our uh, on UI underscore control blocks. And we add in the variable that we want to control. So in this case, volume, and then always end with an end on. Inside here, whenever this volume control is removed or this vol variable is moved, which is the knob, we want it to do something. We want it to do two kind of things. First of all, perhaps the most common command is the set engine par command. You run into this all the time. And essentially this means that it will set whatever you change the volume to for the cutoff filter. So it's very straightforward. It's saying set engine parameter for the engine par cutoff to whatever the value of vol is. And then again, it's locating it. So nice and straightforward. If I save and apply that, now essentially what we've got is as I move this up, then we can see down here that the cutoff filter is moving as well, but the label's not updating. That's because we need to do something there as well. Remember up here, we had the set text function and that was setting the text of the label. I have a feeling we're obviously gonna need something very similar. So we copy that 
and maybe pop it down here and then save that and apply and move it around and there we go. So it's really straightforward when you think about it. You're basically creating a knob and a label and then you're tying the functionality together in an on UI control and you're using the on init to update it to make sure that whenever this instrument loads, it can read whatever's there to begin with and you're not just ended up with a bunch of knobs at zero. I've done it in a number of different ways as well. Obviously with Snowfall, I showed you there that there was just a simple label underneath, but there are other ways to do this as well. Inside Amalgam Analog, for example, it's another instrument I created that's up there available on Piano Book if you'd like. Every time I move a control, one single message bar down here is going to be updated. So I move this control and it updates. I move this control and it updates. This one down here updates. And I just define that using the same functions that I did before, whatever I want this single label to update on based on whatever I'm moving. If we look back at our script, that means that this essential uh, set text block for this particular variable would be used in pretty much all of my on UI controls in that script. No matter what variable I'm adjusting, I'm always updating the same label just with different information in here. So it's a very useful and versatile technique. There is one little special thing I'd like to add in as well. One final thing that just makes it look a little bit more schmick. At the moment, we've got a label that's underneath there and a knob over the top of it, but the label is not centered correctly. As I move that around, it seems like it's shifted over to the side a little bit, plus it's got a background to it. So let's actually fix those two things. Two very simple commands to actually fix this. First of all is the hide part function. And this one hides the part of the label control, so the label that I've declared, and hides the background. So hide part BG for background. And then the other one is set control par, which is a, we're setting a control parameter. So how this, item responds or how it's controlled, that sort of thing. And it's the control par text alignment. And if you do zero, it's left, one, it's center, and two, I think is right. I, I think that's correct over the top of my head, but otherwise check the KSP article just to make sure. Um, but when I apply this, so I'm gonna save and come over to contact and apply that one, you'll see the background disappear and the label shifts to the center position. And as that moves around there, just makes it look a little bit neater a little bit tidier, I think. There are all sorts of things you can do with font families as well. You can change the font color, you can change the position, the size of the font, that sort of stuff. You can even do custom fonts. That is way too much to go into in this video, but I hope that this has helped achieve what you were after. If you wanna see more videos like this, of course, you are welcome to subscribe. I have plenty of videos for contact, but a lot of other stuff as well. KSP stuff, but also music production stuff, sound design stuff, composition, you name it. That is essentially what we do here on this channel. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, why not subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next one.